Tech entrepreneurship is hot. We are constantly hearing about that new app or this new SaaS product. And while technology is revolutionizing how we live, work, and play, an app can't clothe, feed, or shelter us. We still live in the physical world. And as a result, we need tangible products and real world supply chains to make them. And we also need humans running those supply chains and coming up with the ideas and designs for all of those physical products we need. But getting an idea from in your head onto paper and then into production in a lot of ways can be the most difficult step a retail entrepreneur will face. All of a sudden we got really good interest and we had no idea where we were going to produce things. So I got on a plane and flew to China. It was really crazy because I grew up in a family business that was all American. I remember calling my dad saying, hey, I'm going to China to look for manufacturing. And he was like, yeah, good luck with that. Bill Gamber is the founder of outdoor company Big Agnes, which designs sleeping bags, tents, and other outdoor gear that live at the cutting edge. Coming up with those innovative new designs is one thing. Actually finding someone who can produce them? That is a totally different beast. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines, though, are always the highlights, the overnight successes, the billion dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and the press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn into those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. Growing up in a house full of beekeeping visionaries, Bill has been primed for the entrepreneur and business owner life since birth. I grew up in a family business. My grandmother and grandfather started a, a honey business and they bought two hives of bees and they grew it into the largest honey businesses in the world, along with my dad and my aunts and my mom it was a big family business. So I was sort of bred to run that. Even though the honey business has outgrown their family backyard several times over, Bill and his family still had a very active role in the everyday production. They wore every hat and were quite literally jumping from meetings, strategizing million dollar deals, right to manually loading trucks for delivery. My family worked all the time. As far back as I can remember, I would go into what we called the honey house and help my dad like wash barrels, when you're raised in a family business, everybody does sort of everything. So you can wear a lot of hats. And I just remember my dad, when the business started to really grow, I think they have 20 or 30 semis on the road going over, all over the East Coast. My dad would load a truck and then he would go back to his office and answer the phone. It would be like Smuckers or General Mills or Kraft Foods. And then he'd go back out and unload or load another truck. So he was putting these deals together and then he was still loading trucks. You know, he did that till he retired. It was a unique style of business that I just saw as normal. And it's that hands-on, just get it done style of business that would stick with Bill forever. After graduating high school, Bill headed to a small college in Northern Pennsylvania called Lock Haven, where he planned to study business as a precursor to helping run his family honey company. But it was while at college that a new interest would take him down a very different path. I started to race triathlons. I grew up wrestling and then I just kind of burned out. And a coach of mine that I had from high school challenged me to a triathlon one summer when I was in college. So we signed up for this triathlon and it totally kicked my ass. I was a pretty strong wrestler and I was fit, but here was this new sport that I just thought I would probably just crush and it crushed me. So during the whole beginning of triathlons for me, I saw that there, there was a real lack of clothing specific for triathlons. There was bike clothing and running clothing, and, but it seemed like you could put it all together and 
So we started working on some bike shorts that you could swim, bike, and run in. So it was really fun. We just started making colorful triathlon shorts, and I would sell them out of the back of my Jetta all over the East Coast going to race triathlons. I don't think I looked at it as, hey, I want to start a business. I kind of saw it more as I want to make some fun fun things for triathlon and bikes. Bill's fun hobby had become a small business that could fund his triathlons. And while he hadn't planned for the business to turn into anything besides just that, a side project to get a little extra cash and cool shorts, Bill decided to go all in and see where the journey would take him. After college, Bill moved to Steamboat Springs, Colorado, where he worked odd jobs to support his triathlon habit and bike shorts company, which he had decided to name Bewara Action Products, AKA BAP. We went to the SIA ski show in Las Vegas. We got this contract with a company called Ant Mabels that made snowboarding gear. And we started to make hats for them. And that was probably the first real hit, like, wow, this is for real. And we just, we started making thousands of hats and I had a bunch of Mennonite women all over Pennsylvania sewing for us. And these ladies that actually still sew for us, these ladies have worked for me for like 30 years. They've become great friends and they still produce for us. It was one of Bill's first solo lessons in manufacturing. And it taught him early on that finding the right partners the ones that would end up being great friends decades later, was key. With BAP up and running, new inspiration hit, this time for a different piece of outdoor gear. About 20 years ago, I worked with a guy that saw sleeping bags as sort of a design that could be really worked on. And we built a system, a sleeping bag and pad, so the pad slides into a sleeve. That's how we launched Big Agnes. With the innovative idea as a guide, Bill quickly turned to making samples. But finding a manufacturer capable of making such specialized gear turned out to be a much bigger challenge than they could have expected. And then we went to California to this factory that was in Oakland in this really rough section, chain link barbed wire fence around it and barred windows. And we got into this factory and we saw their production line. It was impressive. On the inside, they had some real production. so. Try to get these guys to make our samples. And then it took forever and they wouldn't answer our emails and calls. So we finally made some samples. I believe they were made down in Grand Junction, Colorado. And it was enough to show our concept. All of a sudden, a few people that I knew and a couple other people that my original partner knew did come by and they were like, hey, we love what you guys are doing. We want to sell your product. And we were pleasantly surprised and shocked and still had no idea we were going to make them. After the break, learn how Bill found the right manufacturing partners, his best advice for entrepreneurs, and how his team around the world makes everything Big Agnes does possible. As part of Salesforce's continued commitment to small businesses, they've recently announced Salesforce Care for Small Business, a combination of free products to help during the COVID-19 crisis. New customers will get three months free access to out-of-the-box CRM Salesforce Essentials and Analytics Solution Tableau, as well as six months free access to collaboration tool Quip. Now, more than ever, small businesses need the right tools to connect with their customers. Salesforce is here to help. To learn more, visit salesforce.com slash the journey. Bill didn't yet have a plan for how he'd fulfill all the orders he had just received at the recent trade show, but luck always seemed to swing in Bill's favor. Because at that very same trade show, he also met the person who would connect him with the manufacturers who could fill those orders. We met Al Halski at the trade show and connected with a Hong Kong-based company that made us samples in like three weeks and they were better than anything we could have imagined. And that put us right into business. After enlisting the help of the Hong Kong-based manufacturer, Bill's eyes were opened to the possibility of seeking out production help from around the world. He traveled all over Eastern Asia looking for the perfect partners. We first met a guy named Al Halski and his wife, Lili. 
He's from the Seattle area, but they lived in Taipei and also Shanghai for a long time. He took us all over Asia to source things. And, and so we can't sort of thank him enough. He was an amazing part of our success. And he was such a great friend. He actually passed away last year, which was a big blow to us. We just owe it. he and his wife, Lily, such gratitude. They've been great partners. So through Al, we just met a bunch of people in the industry, particularly in manufacturing and sourcing. And we just made so many good friends. And we were searching for the best manufacturers in the world. And just so happened they were in Southeast Asia. Since then, we've been there. With new manufacturing partnerships established, Bill was in business. The next step was up in consumer sales. But after successfully selling bike shorts out of the back of his Jetta, sales was something he felt was more in his wheelhouse. To have the product in stock, the only thing we needed to do is go sell it. My dad always says, it's easy to sell it, it's hard to buy it and produce it. That's where you, you make a business successful. Bill knew they had a great product. They just needed to get eyes on it. They turned to a PR agency for help and were also featured in several trusted outdoor magazines. We had hired a PR firm at the start, and that was probably the smartest thing that we ever did, and we still work with them. So that helped us just to make really fun gear. Within the first two years, we were able to get in front of REI. We met a great buyer there, Carolyn Burnham. She came to us and said, hey, I'll, I'll give you guys a shot. I'll give you a three-store test. And the test came back really, really great. That just set it off for us there. And they gave us a seven store test and then like a 21 or 24 store test. And we kept producing more products. The big Agnes sleeping bags were hitting shelves and then flying right off of them. And it was at this point, just like with BAP, that Bill was ready to pivot again. When we introduced tents, everybody told us, oh my God, there's so many tents in the market. We don't need another tent brand. Like you're never gonna sell any tents. I personally just needed a new tent. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. We're going to make tents anyway. Between Big Agnes working with our fabric, our manufacturer, and our tent pole supplier, it was just this incredible team to come in and make new innovative tents that totally just put the whole market sort of on their heels. Backpacker Magazine wrote up the Seed House Superlight One as the best for singles. And it was just this paragraph in their uh, gear guide. And it just turned into being this incredible ride for us to, to launch into the tent market. From there, despite all the naysayers, Big Agnes had become known as a leading brand in the tent market. We were the first company to make a sub four pound, two person freestanding backpacking tent. We were the first company to break three pounds and the first to break two pounds, and then we're right at a pound right now. We've been able to design and market and sell the best product because we have such good manufacturers behind us. We have manufacturers that will do everything they can do to help us to get a new idea to market. Those hand-picked manufacturers have played a huge role in Big Agnes's success. No matter what crazy idea Bill and his team wants to tackle, whether it's new stitches, new material, new designs, they are not only up for the challenge, but they have a track record of delivering amazing results. Bill says that a lot of his wins and success has been due to luck or chance. But when you break it down, those wins are derived from Bill's number one priority, working with great people to do great things while not always sticking to a strict business plan. When you start to look at your general business plan, I think everybody thinks they're gonna start this business. Sales are gonna go through the roof and I'm gonna get rich. It's not like that. And so make your plan and see if you can make the dollars work and then cut your sales in half and see if you can still make it work. <laughs> because those are the questions that you have to answer when times get rough. Today, Bill's network of support from family and friends to manufacturers and business partners to his employees and managers are spread all over the world. And it's this worldwide team that makes it possible for you to get anywhere in the world and enjoy that space to its fullest. Bill and Big Agnes don't just focus on their products, although obviously that's a huge part of what they do. They also focus on creating a world we can go and explore. We definitely have a whole group of 
employees and their families that really depend on us. So I would say that that shocks me out of bed some mornings, but we feel like we're responsible to build really good gear and take care of our community. Every time we get a chance to support environmental causes, we do. And we're only able to do that because we have such great support from our, our customers. The Big Agnes family is spread out all over the world. And so for us to be able to do good as a result of being successful in business is something that I'm really proud of. The world was meant to be explored and humans were meant to connect. Bill understands that. And he has used those two principles as his North Star in his business endeavors. From designing products to finding partnerships, everything Bill has done has helped lead him to the same conclusion. Having good products and strong, meaningful partnerships is the ultimate key to success. Or as businessman Ross Perot said, quote, business is not just doing deals. Business is having great products, doing great engineering, and providing tremendous service to customers. Finally, business is a cobweb of human relationships. Today's uncertain business climate makes it critical to stay in touch with your customers and employees. That's why Salesforce recently announced Salesforce Care for Small Business, a combination of free products to help businesses during the COVID-19 crisis. New customers will get three months free access to out-of-the-box CRM Salesforce Essentials and Analytics Solution Tableau, as well as six months free access to collaboration tool Quip. Salesforce is here to help you stay connected. To learn more, visit salesforce.com slash the journey.